Hello everyone, my name is Jason and I'm going to talk you through the new feature that's been introduced to Beyond ATC, uh, CP DLC, and uh, specifically the interaction it's got with the Phoenix A320 aircraft. So CP DLC, which is uh, the controller pilot data link communications, uh, is a system which pilots and ATC can communicate to each other that doesn't involve voice. Um, it's quite common at busy airports, um, but can be used for a number of purposes to try and save time that uh, voice is used for communication. We're going to be focusing on the feature now available within Beyond ATC's software. Um, at the time of making this video, it's only on the experimental branch. Um, so you need to be on that to uh, be able to take advantage of this, but usually when there's no issues with a feature, it ends up on the early access branch fairly soon. So if you're watching this, um, if you don't have the experimental branch, then you might not be able to use it yet, but um, I'm sure within a couple of weeks at least it will be on there as well. So Beyond ATC offers uh, a part of the CP DLC service currently in its first phase, uh, which allows you to request clearance from the air traffic control um, operator. So you would normally do this by requesting IFR clearance using the options within the Beyond ATC app or through verbally requesting it. And then you'd get the response back with your clearance, your departure and your squawk. With CPDLC and the uh, clearance request, you will get that through the CPDLC system instead. So before you get going and setting up the aircraft, there are a few things that you need to, to do. Um, first, as I said, you need to check that you have the right build and have this option enabled. Um, as you can see, I'm on the experimental branch at the bottom of the Beyond ATC window. Another way of knowing if you have the feature available is you see an envelope icon at the top left of the messages. That will be a filter of showing or hiding the CPD on DC messages within the uh, menu. If that's okay, then that's all you need to do with Beyond ATC. With regards to the Phoenix, you need to open up the software that runs when the aircraft is uh, running. So this isn't the installer, this is the A320 application. When you start it up, you'll probably see that the default ACARS service is Hoppy and it's asking for a Hoppy ACARS code. That's how most people have been using CPDLC, which is a player to player um, network. Um, so that's the way you would usually use it for online networks such as VATSIM, where there would be a human ATC controller at the end uh, to pick up your Hoppy message and reply to you. Beyond ATC in this case replaces that human with the AI model. What you need to do is go and drop down and select Beyond ATC and hit apply. And then you're waiting for this green tick it will then ask you if you wish to restart the system. And this is going to restart the Phoenix application. You want to hit OK, and this is just going to reset everything in the plane. So if you have already started setting things up, that's why I said don't, because it will uh, reset all of your displays, your buttons, knobs, etc. So be prepared that you're going to be now starting from scratch after hitting OK. Okay, so we're now back into the aircraft with the Phoenix A320 application now um, restarted. Uh, what I've done is I've skipped ahead a little bit and just got the aircraft powered up. Um, initial bits on the overhead done, ready to start setting up the aircraft further. So uh, the first thing you need to do if you haven't done it already is uh, import your flight plan into the Phoenix application. Um, and then you can then start setting up the aircraft. Before we do, um, I just want to point out one thing you need to do that might confuse you later if you don't do it now. The screen above the uh, the MCD or the MCDU um, will return messages that you've received through the CPDLC. However, in some cases, you might find that the screen is off, which is um, looking like this. There are some white lines. You need to be able to see the white lines quite clearly. If you don't, then that screen is not on or it's not bright enough. So you can just increase the brightness using the uh, screen there. So beyond ATC and the CPDLC system requires certain things to be filled out for it to work. So you need to follow these exactly, otherwise the, uh, the system uh, may not work for you. 
So the first stage is to do the init A page on the MCDU. You do that by hitting the init request as you perhaps normally would. Uh, it will leave three uh, fields um, blank. So we will need to, to fill those out for the CPDLC system to work. Now the flight number needs to be exactly what is on your SIM brief plan as you filed it. Um, this isn't the um, actual flight number, but it's usually the call sign that you've put in, which can be a little bit confusing. Um, the best way to find this is if you go on to pilot brief on the EFB, it will load your flight plan. I have this flight plan in the easy format, so it might look a bit different to you if you uh, have that differently. But ultimately, you're looking for this um, flight number here, which is Easy 78 Hotel Uniform. Uh, the actual flight number that like sort of tickets are booked against is this U20883 number. Don't worry about that. Um, we'll also need the cost index and the flight level uh, for filling out the NEA page. So that's four and two hundred. Now, what you can also do is you can look at the Beyond ATC software, and it will show you the call sign or the flight number there. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't give you the exact um, representation of it as it needs to be put into the system. It gives you a um, representation of how you say the call sign. So EZY is said as easy, um, but you may see that it says something else. But the last part, which is 78 hotel uniform, should at least match. Um, but to be sure, grab it from your flight plan, however means you wish to do that. So come back in to the NEA page. We'll now enter those details into here which is an easy 78 hotel uniform. And we had a cost index of four and a flight level of 200. So we'll put that in and that will complete this page. Um, and you should see the uh, details at the bottom to say that there's been an uplink. Uh, you can clear them off. Um, there might be other things that you do, such as loading the winds here. Crack on and do that. But uh, for this video, I'm not going to worry about unnecessary pages at the moment. So after that, you need to go into the uh, MCDU menu and then go into ATSU and then to uh, AOC. You need to go onto the flight init page on here and init data request. And this will populate this information here. Again, this is very important. If you don't do this, it will not work. You're expecting the flight number at the top when it loads to match what you put on the init A page and obviously should match the uh, the flight plan as well. Once you've done that, go on to the AOC menu back page and then on to ATC request. From here, you then have two different types of clearances. The only one that works is pre-departure clearance or PDC. Click on that and you'll get to this page. If you've done the other pages correctly, some of this will already be completed. Uh, but there are some fields that you still need to fill in uh, for the system to work. So I am at gate 113 at Gatwick, I know that. Um, it says it's there where the originator is Gatwick. The ATIS was Echo, I just checked that a short while ago. You should have uh, done that already. Uh, and then the station code is effectively the same as the originating airport, in this case, Echo Golf Kilo Kilo. What we then do is we then hit send. Now the MCDU doesn't give you any indication of what it's doing at this point. It just sort of resets this page, but you'll see in the beyond ATC window that there is a clearance. Now it comes back quicker within beyond ATC, but eventually Phoenix will get it come through on their system uh, on this screen above. Okay, there we go. So we've now got it come back. Uh, it will appear on this, the screen and what we will get as well in it shortly is the ATC message light flashing as well to give you an indication. Uh, you need to acknowledge this. If you don't, it will make a, uh, a sort of phone ringing noise. So you can just click that to acknowledge it. When you come down here, you're just looking at this screen and you're just checking that the details on it are matching what you're expecting. So uh, I know that I filed a flight plan to Jersey, which is Echo Golf Juliet Juliet. Uh, runway 26 left was on the ATIS. Obviously, if that runway isn't at your departing airport, then that should raise some alarm bells. Um, we've got the departure and we've got our squawk. 
they've confirmed the ATIS and then they've given instructions on what to do to um, continue. So you need to reply back to this in the same way that you'd read back your clearance through the uh, the radio, um, effectively saying that I uh, understand it and I agree with it. So you're hitting Wilco. It pushes Wilco up to the top right and then you just hit send. It will go green. It will say sending, received by ATC. And you'll see in the BATC window that that's um, popped up as being confirmed. That should trigger a... Uh, a further message shortly just to confirm that they've got a confirmation okay so once you've uh, done all of that you will now have the option to request push and start within the uh, beyond ATC window you can close the the message and you'll see there was another message underneath there just to confirm that um, everything's been cleared you need to have that confirmed before beyond ATC will allow you to uh, request the push and start. And that is currently the implementation of CPDLC within Beyond ATC and specifically the Phoenix A320 aircraft. Um, it's very easy to use. Um, you, you do the exact same thing no matter which airport you're at. Uh, Beyond ATC supports it at all the airports currently, although in the real world not every airport has this feature available. Uh, but the idea being is that everyone gets a chance to, to use it no matter where they are. If they know that the OR airport doesn't have it in real world, you're obviously more than welcome not to use it and to use voice or your traditional method through Beyond ATC. But um, if you've got any um, questions, you feel free to put them in the comments. If you've got any feedback or bugs, the Beyond ATC Discord has a thread available for you to post your, uh, your feedback, positive or critical, um, as well as any bug reports. Um, which you can provide your logs for. But there's uh, more information on the Beyond ATC Discord if you wish to do that. Hopefully this video has been helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.